Hello everyone, it's vlog time again, and this past week all I've wanted to do is hide in a hole. So I thought today I'd do the next best thing and tell you the origin story of my laptop compu body sock. Well, I made some notes, but I'm having trouble reading them. Uh, there we go. So I made this thing in 2008. Uh, I had moved to Arizona to start a PhD program and I had this like cubicle desk and um, it was really heavily air conditioned inside and my fingers were really cold typing on the keyboard. So I made this keyboard cozy. Here I had my, my classmate Lisa model it, and that was great for this plug-in keyboard. But when I went to go make one for, for this, my 2007 15-inch MacBook Pro, um, I couldn't find like a, I don't know, I just like couldn't stop knitting. Do you guys know that feeling? I mean, some knitters, it just comes over you. So I just couldn't stop knitting, I kept knitting, and I made this really weird shape. When I got up to this head part, I kind of figured, well, it's kind of like, an upside down foot and so this could be like the heel of a sock so you might recognize that some of that shaping in this pattern and then I thought well what's the way to document a project like this uh, the thing itself is kind of silly but what if I uh, sort of show people how I made it and then I can um, use that kind of as an artist statement instead of like a plaque on a wall for what is ultimately a sculpture this is not a useful device um, the computer that's inside it has been dead for a long time Anyway, so I published the Instructable. Can I do the whole interview like this? Do you want, do you don't want me to do the whole interview like this? Oh, okay, I guess, but now my notes are still, okay. <laughs> I don't really need my notes, it's okay. So I brought it to Maker Faire Bay Area in 2008, got some shots on the airplane on the way there, the Instructable staff wearing it at the booth there. This project didn't fit into my grad school work quite so easily, which was about like HCI and um, interaction design. And it did highlight this, you know, space between the user and the computer defining like an attention space, but it's really more of a sculpture than it is um, a piece of technology or design. And I released it on the Fat Lab site. Free Art and Technology is an internet art group I was a part of that was um, making a lot of really cool art at the intersection of pop culture and technology. So in, hang on, I, um, I wanna make sure I'm on track with my notes. Yeah, okay, so this thing, it went through multiple waves of, um, of famous on the internet, you know, like uh, um, one time, I, I guess somebody put like a custom request on um, Etsy's old feature Alchemy, asking for somebody to make them a custom version of this. So I got, that's how I got on the blog Regretsy, which was just, you know, a dream come true of mine. Uh, love that blog. Anybody else? Give me a thumbs up if you liked Regretsy. Um, and then, you know, so many waves to the point where, like, my boss at Make Magazine um, was f forwarding me, like, the picture and saying, like, hey, Becky, you should blog this on Make. And I'd be like, I did when I made it in 2008. And he was like, oh, no wonder. So because it was so internet famous, I had the opportunity to exhibit it in real life in 2013 at the Fat Gold Show, which was a retrospective of the Fat Labs work curated by Lindsay Howard at iBeam Art and Technology Center here in New York. I made a packing tape mannequin of my friend Haley and then um, put clothes on it and had it, uh, you know, modeling this. It has a dead laptop inside, the battery's shot, this uh, screen is broken, but uh, hey, it fills out the shape just fine. That show came to life later again that year in the Netherlands and then in 2015 in San Francisco. So I got a chance to exhibit this piece of sculptural artwork uh, with a bunch of good friends of mine and really good other work because I published the instructions about it on the internet. So I think that's great. Okay, so let me answer some frequently asked questions about this thing. One, does it overheat your laptop? Well, um, yes. And so it's a sculpture and not a functional uh, object that is for practical use. You can still see the screen quite well, but yes, it's a wool sweater, so any ventilation properties your laptop had before are now inhibited, and also it, it um, you know, you're breathing into it, so it makes this pocket of air here really, really warm, um, and it's not very comfortable to wear for more than just a, a photo op, I would say. Um, <laughs> I, I'm sorry if that disappoints you. You could theoretically make it in like a lighter weight fabric, uh, like sew some t-shirts together or a, um, you know, just use a non-wool fiber. Um, and then 
isn't this just for watching porn? And like, you know, I, I didn't think of that when I made it, but art is in the eye of the beholder. And so, you know, it's up to you. Um, and then will you make me one is another common question. And I'd say, I made an instructable about how I put it together. It's not really an exact pattern because I never made more than one. So uh, I just tried to kind of outline my thought process. And then you could theoretically make a cozy for any knitted thing, um, you know. Okay, while I'm in here, I want to tell you another story that's really embarrassing, though. So, like, I don't have to look at you while I tell you. Um, I was so upset last week about the election. After my uh, class ended on Thursday night at SVA in Manhattan, I was getting ready to get on my motorcycle, and I put my backpack down, and then I, um, I totally forgot it. I left it there. I left my backpack on the curb, and I rode home on my motorcycle, and I didn't notice. My, my motorcycle jacket has like armor in it, so it kind of feels like I'm wearing a backpack all the time. I didn't realize until I was on the Manhattan Bridge, stuck in traffic, um, that I had left my backpack with my laptop and my wallet um, and my camera in, you know, just on the curb on the street. And um, I had to wait until I got off the end of the bridge to call anybody because I'm stuck in this stop and go traffic. You can't pull over on the bridge and um, I needed both hands. I had my phone and my keys. So I called my old student who I knew was still in the lab and he ran down uh, to look for my backpack and it was still there, can you believe it? Um, so he grabbed my backpack and saved the day and I, I rode back up and got it. Like, oh my gosh, I hadn't done that something so stupid in years. <sighs> and when I do do stuff that stupid, I tend to get so lucky. Like, you know, I could have been in a foreign country and my passport could have been in my backpack, that kind of thing. But instead, um, I didn't lose a single thing. It did make me um, evaluate some things, right? Like, oh crap, is my renter's insurance policy up to date? Oh crap, do I have remote wipe on my laptop? I do have a piece of paper in my wallet that says, uh, big reward if returned. So, you know, you hope for the best, but geez. I don't, I, my GoPro battery was dead, so I didn't have any footage of that. Thank you for uh, letting me hide from the story, but I really wanted to tell you because um, it's indicative of how I've been feeling this past week. So thanks so much for watching. Uh, I try to put out new DIY videos about tech crafts and vlogs about my life here in New York City every week, and um, I appreciate your support. See you next time.